Unto them I will give my house and within my walls a memorial and a name, an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. President Perez, Prime Minister Netanyahu, Chairman Shalev, Rabbi Lau, thank you for sharing this house, this memorial, with me today. And thank you to the people of Israel for preserving the names of the millions taken from us, of blessed memory, names that shall never be forgotten. This is my second visit to this living memorial. Uh, since then, I've walked among the barbed wire and guard towers of Buchenwald. Um, Rabbi Lau uh, told me of his time there, and we reminisced about uh, our good friend Elie Wiesel uh, and the memories that he shared with me. Uh, I've stood in the old Warsaw ghetto with survivors who would not go quietly, uh, but nothing equals the wrenching power of this sacred place where the totality of the Shoah is told. We could come here a thousand times and each time our hearts would break. For here we see the depravity to which man can sink, the barbarism that unfolds when we begin to see our fellow human beings as somehow less than us, less worthy of dignity and of life. We see how evil can, for a moment in time, triumph when good people do nothing, and how silence abetted a crime unique in human history. Here we see their faces and we hear their voices. We look upon the objects of their lives, the art that they created, the prayer books that they carried. We see that even as they had hate etched into their arms, they were not numbers. They were men and women and children, so many children, sent to their deaths because of who they were, how they prayed, or who they loved. And yet here, alongside man's capacity for evil, we also are reminded of man's capacity for good. The rescuers, the righteous among nations who refuse to be bystanders, and in their noble acts of courage, we see how this place, this accounting of horror, is in the end a source of hope. For here we learn that we are never powerless. In our lives, we always have choices to succumb to our worst instincts or to summon the better angels of our nature, to be indifferent to suffering wherever it may be, whoever it may be visited upon, or to display empathy that is at the core of our humanity. We have the choice to acquiesce to evil or make real our solemn vow never again. We have the choice to ignore what happens to others or to act on behalf of others and to continually examine in ourselves whatever dark places there may be that might lead to such actions or inactions. This is our obligation, not simply to bear witness, but to act. For us, in our time, this means confronting bigotry and hatred in all of its forms, racism, especially anti-Semitism. None of that has a place in the civilized world, not in the classrooms of children, not in the corridors of power. And let us never forget the link between the two. For our sons and daughters are not born to hate. They are taught to hate. So let us fill their young hearts with the same understanding and compassion that we hope others have for them. Here we hope, because after you walk through these halls, after you pass through the darkness, uh, there is light. The glorious view of the Jerusalem forest 
with the sun shining over the historic homeland of the Jewish people, a fulfillment of the prophecy, you shall live again upon your own soil. Here on your ancient land, let it be said for all the world to hear, the state of Israel does not exist because of the Holocaust, but with the survival of a strong Jewish state of Israel, such a Holocaust will never happen again. Here we pray that we all can be better, that we can all grow. Like the sapling near the Children's Memorial, a sapling from a chestnut tree that Anne Frank could see from her window. The last time she described it in her diary, she wrote, our chestnut tree is in full bloom. It's covered with leaves and is even more beautiful than last year. That's a reminder of who we can be. But we have to work for it. We have to work for it here in Israel. We have to work for it in America. We have to work for it around the world um, to tend the light and the brightness uh, as opposed to our worst instincts. So may God bless the memory of the millions. May their souls be bound up in the bond of eternal life. And may each spring bring a full bloom even more beautiful than the last. When we visited the Hall of Names, I mentioned a story of one human being. It was the story of uh, Israel Eliyahu, Morocco, who used to be a cantor in Amsterdam in the Central School a Synagogue. And uh, I told that out of a sudden, and here we can present it to the President, uh, we got a letter a year ago from a lady by the name Ruth Cantor, who is living right now is in Silver, Michigan, Silver Lake, Michigan, and she sent us this page, the other part is here, which was written in 41. This was composed by Cantor Morocco in Amsterdam under the German Nazi occupation. One page that survived the whole corpus of his creativity as a composer, as a cantor. And this page is the tune for the story of Chad Gadia, which is concluding our Seder uh, every year. And this is the only page that survived after he was <coughs> murdered. He was deported to Sobibor, as many other Dutch Jews. He, his wife, to a son and a daughter. Only one son survived in a hiding place. And uh, that lady wrote to us, I feel in my heart deeply that uh, this kind of uh, I think memento of uh, remembrance should be here in Jerusalem in the mountain of remembrance, and we are glad to present it to President Obama. Uh, then we found a page of testimony, which was filled in 53 by the only sign that survived, the beginning that when we embarked on that huge project to collect the names, every singular human being. And here you can see a photograph of Santo Morocco, which is unique. So, Mr. President, can we show it to the media with your permission? You can see. Thank you so much. Mr. President, President Perez, Prime Minister Netanyahu, I want to use this occasion. It's an opportunity for me to thank you. On April 11, 1945, in the concentration camp of Buchenwald, which you visited, the American troops broke in led by General Patton of the division of General Dwight Eisenhower and have liberated us. 
One of the Jewish leaders in the United States, Rabbi Herschel Schechter, was eight years the president of the President's Conference. He served as a chaplain by General Patton. He entered into the barracks, where we were there, crying in Yiddish, Jews, you are free. And we didn't believe, after six years of horror, such a tunnel, we never believed. This is the opportunity to thank you, to thank the American people who came finally on 1945, April, to take us out, not from slavery to freedom, but from death to life. I want to add one sentence. Two months ago, we had Avner Shalem and myself the privilege to appear every year at the government's meeting for the International Commemoration Day of Holocaust. Prime Minister Netanyahu was very kind to give us the word and I told a short episode from last year I experienced in Seattle, the United States, a corner which is a very small Holocaust museum, one room. At the front stood a brigadier general, an old man, very handsome man, the uniforms with all the medals of the United States, welcomed me with tears in his eyes, he knew that I'm a Holocaust survivor, a child from Buchenwald. He shook my hand and said, Rabbi, I was one of the liberators of Buchenwald. I served with General Patton. When I have heard that you are coming to Seattle, I ask the permission to meet with you before I give back my soul to the Lord of the universe, me. Leo Hymas is my name, asking from you forgiveness for being late. We came too late. I saw what we have seen. I understand we were late. Forgive me. I told him if 67 years, 68 years almost, you have in your heart, in your consciousness, this worriness that you have to ask forgiveness must be a great man. Yesterday, Mr. President, you promised us that we are not alone. Don't be too late. Remember, we need your support. We need your friendship. We appreciate your love to us, to the entire world. And we all together, next week, sitting at the night of the Seder, together from all over the countries in the globe, we are asking not only to praise the Lord Almighty for the past of Exodus, but also we pray for the peace in Israel, in the Middle East, in the entire world, and you will help us together to have the great days of light after the dark tunnel. Thank you very much.